All right. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this special meeting of the Tiger Tualatin School Board. I will call this meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. Uh, Dr. Ricky Smith, are there any changes to the agenda? There are none, Chair. All right. Hearing that, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I move to approve the agenda as presented. I second. All right, motion was made by Director Jaimes and seconded by Director Bowman. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll move to a choral vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously. With that, we will move to reports and discussion. <clears throat> so our first item is remarks from Director Lynn. He is unable to join us at this time, but may be joining us later. So I have been given permission to read remarks on his behalf, which I will do so now. Last spring, I announced that I had accepted a position with the University of Colorado Denver to serve as Dean and Professor at the School of Education and Human Development. My commitment to the Tiger to Alton School Board weighed heavily in my decision. I intended to continue to prioritize my contributions to the school board, serving out my term while balancing a hybrid transition to my new leadership position with UC. I have dedicated my life's work to education. One of my greatest privileges has been to serve TTSD as an elected official while my son finishes his high school education at Tualatin High School. Unfortunately, circumstances have changed, making it more difficult for me to fulfill my new obligations while balancing my duties as a TTSD school board member. Therefore, I submit this letter as my formal resignation from the board. I step away from this honorable position with great pride in the work I have led and contributed to, co-leading the vision and creation of the district's new equity-focused strategic plan and establishment of the Education, Accountability, Solutions, and Healing, or the EASH Committee, are just two examples of my dedication to fortifying socially just, equity-driven public education systems for generations to come. I thank you for the opportunity to serve alongside four community-elected, passionate public education servants in whom I have great confidence. I am also humbled and honored to have served the past two years alongside brilliant student leaders who will no doubt make their positive and just marks on our society as they graduate and move forward in their life pursuit. So um, with that, I was going to open up the um, floor to board comments and I have something that I will start with and um, kind of get that discussion or those remarks going. Um, so I would like to, I have this all written here. I would like to thank Dr. Lynn for his service to TTSD. I had the honor of being elected to the school board alongside Dr. Lynn and Vice Chair Jaimes in 2021. Since joining the board, Dr. Lin has led students with students and equity as his guide, which is evident in his many contributions to our work. Dr. Lin, you are a fearless advocate for students, especially students of color and specifically black students. It has been a privilege to serve alongside you in our collective work dedicated to the stewardship of the public's trust and investment in our district. And I am speaking and thinking specifically of the work we did co-leading the, the strategic plan that we did this year. We have done some heavy lifting in support of building sustainable systems that ensure every student who walks through our doors feels that investment, that they understand their value and purpose, and is on the path to academic and lifelong success. This is a clear representation of the values you brought to this district, and you have made us better. Your work over the past year and a half will have a lasting and direct impact on the success of all students. We thank you, Dr. Lynn, for your service to TTSD, and we wish you great success. I would now open it up to the board for additional remarks. Well, I will um, I will reach out to Dr. Lynn privately um, to thank him for his service. Um, I'm disappointed he's not here tonight, but I know he's got other uh, um, things that he's working through. But it's been a tough time to serve on the school board. That's something that I've learned in this role. Um, I think it's something that you've all probably learned too. And Dr. Lin, you know, we, I, I remember talking to him before he ran and telling him what my experience had been like, and he stepped forward and he put his name forward and he lent his expertise. He lent a lot of his time and uh, I'm grateful for that service to the community. And I know there's a lot of students out there 
um, who his service has meant a lot to. So um, I'll reach out privately to Dr. Lin. I'd encourage my colleagues to as well. But um, uh, Dr. Lin, if you are watching the reruns of this meeting, thank you um, for stepping up to serve and for your time on the board. And I'll just echo uh, Dr. Lin, thank you for your service and you know best wishes um, in your endeavors going forward. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, moving on to our next item, which is public comment. For this special meeting, comments that have been submitted in written format have been provided to the board and become part of the public record, including the meeting minutes. And I just wanted to note that we have received comments from the following. Jeanette Shad, Tony Carrasco, David Grand, Russell and Loretta Johnson, Carol Greeno, and Jeanette Bailey. With that, we will now move to our first action item. <clears throat> so, per ORS 332.0301A, which states the district school board shall declare the office of a director vacant upon the happening of any of the following, the death or resignation of the incumbent, and school board policy BBC, which says board member resignation. The board believes that any citizen who files and seeks election or appointment to the board should do so with full knowledge of and appreciation for the investment in time, effort, and dedication expected of all board members and that the citizen's intent is to serve a full term of office. When a member decides to terminate service, the board requests earliest possible notification of intent to resign so the board may plan for the continuity of board business. Resignations must be made in writing. Board members can resign the office effective at a future date. The board will announce the resignation and declare the vacancy at a board meeting. The board will determine the, procedure, the procedures to be used in filling the vacancy. The board may begin a replacement process and select a successor prior to the effective date of resignation. However, the actual appointment shall not be made before the resignation. So per that statute and board policy, we are declaring the office of a director vacant by accepting Director Lynn's resignation. I would now entertain a motion relative to the acceptance of Director Lynn's resignation and thereby declaring a board vacancy. Chair, I move to accept the resignation letter from Director Marvin Lynn, thereby declaring a board vacancy. A second. Motion was made by Vice Chair Jaimes and seconded by Director Zershmi. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll move to a choral vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. So then the next part of our action items, um, now that we have declared a vacancy, per ORS 332.0304, which states, when a vacancy is declared under subsection 1A, B, or D to F of this section, the remaining member or members of the board shall meet and appoint a person to fill the vacancy. The person must satisfy the eligibility requirements under ORS 332.018, and if the district is zoned, reside in the zone in which the vacancy occurs. A director appointed under this subsection shall serve to June 30th next following the next regular district election. At that election, a successor shall be elected to serve the remainder, if any, of the unexpired term to which the director was appointed. If the term to which the director was appointed expires June 30th next following the election of the successor, the successor shall be elected to a full term. In any case, the successor shall take office July 1st next following the election. So that statute, as well as board policy BBE, which says vacancies on the board, <clears throat> vacancies will be filled through board appointment. The board appointee must be a legally reg registered voter and a resident within the district for one year immediately preceding the appointment. In the event of multiple vacancy, the position vacated first will be filled first. Upon appointment by the board, the newly appointed board member or members will be sworn and seated immediately. 
If the offices of a majority of board members are vacant at the same time, the directors of the Northwest Regional Education Service District shall appoint persons to fill the vacancies from qualified district voters. Board elections are held every odd numbered year, which for the purposes of this policy are termed election years. The appointee will one, serve until June 30th following the next election, at which time the individual elected in May of that year will fill the remaining portion of an unexpired term or serve a full four year term, or two, serve until June 30th of a subsequent election year if the vacancy occurs after the filing date in an election year. A board member so elected as a replacement will serve the remaining year or years of the term of office of the board member being replaced. So to be clear, the person chosen to fill this vacancy will only serve until June 30th of this year. If that person would like to stand for election in May, they may do so. Whoever is voted in to fill the vacant seat will then serve the remainder of Director Lynn's term, which expires in 2025. To articulate the process to fill the vacancy, I would like to offer the following for the board's consideration. Immediately following this meeting, we would begin accepting letters of interest from the community. <clears throat> letters of interest should be sent to board secretary, Patty Roberts, and we would uh, give her address there. Please review eligibility criteria on our website by clicking on the About Us tab then selecting school board then selecting becoming a board member, and finally clicking on how do I become a school board candidate. This would all be outlined in district communications as well. Applications would be due no later than January 13th at 4 p.m. The board would conduct interviews the week of January 17th. We would have nominations for the appointment of the January 23rd regular board meeting, and that person would be sworn in and seated at that time. So that is the articulated process for which I am asking you to consider um, at this time. And now um, I would entertain a motion to approve this process as outlined. I have a, a question before we proceed. Yes. So that committee, are we talking about, sorry, are we talking about a committee that will receive all of those applications and then make a recommendation to the board? or are we talking about all the board members conducting those interviews of applicants? Yes, so the once all the applications are received, the board would conduct, the full board would conduct the, the interviews of all eligible applicants the week of the 17th. And then at the January 23rd meeting, um, someone could be nominated and then voted on for that appointment. So we should make sure that applicants understand that they will be interviewed in public because that's the only way the board can do its business. Um, it probably doesn't make any difference, but I just want to make sure that, you know, people know that they're going to have to go out there, put themselves forward and, and be seen publicly. Yes. Thank you for that. Yes. Dr. Stu. Thank you. Um, so to be clear, just for a point of clarity, Director Zershmeen, um, in previous districts where we've had this happen, we, we utilized a work session uh, where the public could attend and observe um, the, the, the interviews in progress. Uh, but you know, obviously no decision is made. It is made at, at, the, at the general meeting, um, but the work session was, was the vehicle for those um, interviews. Is, is that what you were thinking or are you thinking of a different process? No, that's exactly what I was thinking. I just, I wasn't sure. I, I've seen it done multiple ways where there was a, a subcommittee, two board members, not a quorum of the board, who could then go and interview um, all of the applicants and then come back to the board with a recommendation of which applicant they wanted. That made the uh, interviews um, able to be a more private um, affair, for lack of a better word, um, which gave some some protection to people who didn't want to know that they hadn't been, that they had put themselves out there, but didn't get selected. Um, either way is legal, either way is fine. I just wanted to clarify which way we were going to be doing it. I personally like the idea of doing it in public with the entire board. That way the entire board hears all the questions, hears all the answers, and has the full amount so that when we do vote in, in our regular session, we all have had the same experience. And I would offer that that has been our, our tradition um, and our, our history in TTSD um, is to do things um, in public and uh, with full disclosure. That's great. Director Bowman? 
Yeah, I was just going to voice my support for the, the process you've outlined. I do have a clarifying question or maybe just a comment. I'm not quite sure. So it is possible re we receive one or two or four applicants. It's also possible we ex we receive 10 or 20 applicants. So um, perhaps that's our executive committee with Chair Irvin and Vice Chair Jaimes to figure out once we have closed the rece receiving applications, are we asking everyone one question and they get two minutes um, or does ever, you know, and is everyone in the room when other people are interviewing? Or are we asking people to wait outside and then come in? Like there's some logistical quirks that I think we'll have to work through, but I think it's probably too early to design that. So just wanted to flag that. That was something that came to my mind, but I think we'll have to wait and see um, how many folks put their names forward. Yes, that's good feedback. And I think um, one plan would be sort of once that deadline closes and we see the numbers with what we're looking at, we can kind of, you know, set those two or three questions that we would ask every interviewee um, and then kind of look at how that would be structured. Um, so after discussion, oh, is there any other comments? Yep. Sorry, one other. So will they, when they're submitting their interest to us, they are submitting a letter of interest addressed to patty and that we will all review but there's no questionnaire associated with it or any other sort of um okay got it yep so because there was discussion i would call the question um now to reopen the motion Dr. Ricky Smith? Yeah, Chair, you will need to ask for the motion. Oh. I move to accept the process to fill the board vacancy as director, or excuse me, as Chair Urban outlined initially. Perfect. I second. All right. Motion was made by Director Zershmead and seconded by Vice Chair Jaimes. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Just that I'm I'm excited, and I hope members of the community um, who are who are interested step forward. Um, we've got a great community, and I'd love to see lots of people apply. Even if waiting through twenty applications might be laborious, I think it would be good for the district to get, you know, a lot of applicants and a lot of different perspectives. I agree. This is a great opportunity to hear from our community, in which we have often in, like asked. For their engagement and have really set, I think, a lot of um, opportunities to be engaged, um, especially with our um, director Un and a lot of the work that she has done in terms of um, our communities in the district um, to really make sure that we are hearing hearing from those applicants and those voices. Dr. Ricky Smith. Thank you. I received notification uh, from um, Dr. Lin that he uh, is attempting to enter um, as his resignation has um, negated his e his district email. Patty, could you send him um, a new link um, uh, relative to uh, his personal email um, so that uh, he may he may join the meeting? Thank you so much. I apologize for the interruption. No problem. Um, so the motion on the table that was made and seconded um, in terms of that articulated process of filling the vacancy, um, we will now, hearing no further discussion, move to a choral vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion carries unanimously. And so just to reiterate what I said earlier, I know there was a lot of policy talk and um, statutes being read, but we will outline that process in district communications for community members that are interested in submitting that letter of interest. Um, and then I am wondering if we, how, how long Marvin indicated until he would pop in the room, hopefully shortly, and then I will wait to adjourn until we have him in. One quick question while we're waiting. Um, if there's a community member who expresses interest, uh, Dr. Sue, do we direct them to you or Director Rose or to Patty um, if they want, if they have questions or want to um, learn more? 
Yeah, certainly. Um, any of the above, you know, uh, Patty as the board secretary, um, we, we will funnel all letters of interest that direction. Certainly if they have questions uh, relative to relationships uh, relative to the board and superintendent, you know, I'm more than happy to, to handle that. Uh, Tra Director Rose has also very ably handled general general questions relative to boards, uh, board function. Um, and so we are all available to assist um, as useful to them. Great, thank you. And I apologize, Chair. Uh, Patty, if you can use Marvin.Lynn email for him. I've sent the address in your in your text. All right, and we will wait a couple of minutes and hope that he will join us briefly at the end here. We need stiller elevator music or something. <coughs> Sorry that took me so long. I didn't. I thank you, Dr. Sue, for sending his Gmail. I did not have that, and was frantically looking for something. <laughs> no worries. Thank you so much, Patty. Mm -hmm. And now that's been sent, we will give a couple more minutes to allow him in. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hello, oh, Dr. Lynn. Lynn. Thank you for being here. Thank you for finding a hi. Thank you for being here. And I Can apologize you... for the the email snafu. Can you hear us okay? Yes, it's a little bit choppy. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, so we have gotten through the agenda, but wanted to save space and time at the end for any additional comments. Um, we gave you some remarks earlier, and I know most of us will reach out to you individually um, just with words of um, gratitude and um, and best wishes. Um, but And you can certainly, as uh, Director Bowman said, kind of watch the replay and see what has been said. But um, we did want to just give you an opportunity for any final comments before we adjourn. Thank you. Are you able to hear me okay? Yes. Okay, well, thanks so much for this opportunity. Uh, sort of my last hurrah, if you will. Uh, and thank you for reading that, that letter. Uh, that expresses, I think, uh, my sentiments with regard to the board and, um, and completing this uh, uh, service. Um, but I do want to say that, um, you know, this has really been an incredible learning experience. Uh, you know, as a researcher and leader in higher education, I wasn't exposed to the inner workings of schools, except when I was a teacher, which was many years ago. Um, and I've learned really a lot about how schools work and, and what they need to be well supported in order to achieve the goals that are really laid out for them by the public. Uh, it's also become clear to me that the public doesn't have facing school districts. That was really an eye-opening experience for me and I'm grateful for the education that I received. And so I plan to use my knowledge to enhance how I think about the preparation of school clear is that school board positions are deeply political in just about every way. <laughs> I have to admit that I often observed silently, but in, but in wonder as members of the community regularly assailed the board and the superintendent for every problem that you can imagine. I came to understand that it was our role to listen and not to necessarily respond directly to feedback from the community, even if it was highly critical or, or accusatory. Our, pre, our chair 
uh, uh, Ben Bowman and now you, Tristan, um, effectively follow up uh, on behalf of the board. And so I learned to listen and watch and wait for um, the chair to respond. However, in the last few days, the criticism of the board took a very personal turn and was directed at me specifically. Uh, it was the first time I encountered this as a board member. I found myself being accused of a, a variety of things. Um, and again, I was accustomed to not responding. Uh, however, this time I did, um, because I realized that, that my colleagues at my place of business and my place of employment had been blind copied on emails that accused me, fellow board members, uh, and the superintendent of a number of transgressions. Um, I feel at peace with how the situation has been handled thus far, but I do wanna offer some ideas to my fellow board colleagues and to this community as I take my lead. First, there must be greater efforts to work across political party lines. There is such gross division among political leaders in our state at every level, the state house and school boards. I'd recommend a group of Republicans and Democrats come together to, to determine a set of nonpartisan priorities for our state. I think this must happen at every level if our state is to survive. And I still think of Oregon as my state. Next, what happened to me should never happen to another board member. One should not be worried about losing their job because they are serving their community in an elected role. The OSBA must develop policy that provides this and other protections for school board members who are experiencing threats and harassment at the hands of those who might deem themselves political foes. Uh, regardless of our politics, we are public servants and our duty is to serve all, whether they be Republican or Democrat. OSBA must ensure that school board members can do their jobs safely without fear of professional recrimination. And I will continue to work as a private citizen to ensure that that happens. Next, greater attention must be paid to black staff and students across Oregon. Black people in Oregon are not okay. Anti-black racism in Oregon is more prevalent than it is just about anywhere on the planet. And I have had the opportunity to be to, to, to visit much of the planet. How can leaders, um, the question of reality and better protect our staff and our students who don't feel safe in any of our schools across our state? Finally, as you're all aware, I will continue to own a home here and my children will remain in the schools until the end of the academic year. And as a private citizen and now former school board member, I will continue to fight to ensure that the district fulfills its mission of being equity minded and that it commits to serving all students well, that it continues its commitment. And I believe the district already has this commitment. I will ensure that it, it continues this. I wish you all the best as you continue to pursue this important mission. And I remain, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Lynn. I'm so happy that you were able to come on and express those thoughts. And I think there is a lot of really good advice um, in what you said. And again, I wanna thank you for your service. I am excited to finish out the, and I know the rest of the board would join me in being excited to finish out this year with Nase as well um, and the rest of our student reps and Glad that you are still considering Oregon your home. Um, and again, thank you so much for everything that you have brought to your position um, within PTSD and will continue to do so as a community member. Um, thank you, Chair Irvin, thank you. Yes, absolutely. So um, with that, I will adjourn this meeting at 7.30 p.m. Have a lovely evening and thank you for